let's take a look at Asturias. So Asturias, a very simple and difficult piece at the very beginning. Uh, the easiest way to learn it is to just think of the melody, right? You actually have this first part. That is going to repeat. You're going to play it only with your thumb and it's on seventh position starting on the fifth string. So one, fifth string. Then you move straight away to the fourth string. Three, four, one, three. Back up to the fifth string with four. And then you start again. Right? Now that's going to repeat itself. Um, I believe three times. Unfortunately, I don't have the score with me this time around. So, just to double check. Now, in between each one of those notes, you're going to put a descant note. You're going to put an open B string that you're going to alternate with index and middle, right? So you play thumb, index, thumb, middle, back and forth, okay? Oh, a little bit out of tune, sorry. to be careful with is you hear so many people playing this piece and they forget that there needs to be a balance between what is the melody in this case in the bass and the accompaniment the descant a lot of people tend to play that part a little bit too loud and it's just a matter of getting used to the balance between thumb and fingers while you're doing that so take a little bit away from the fingers rather than thinking I'm going to make my thumb louder think my thumb stays where it is I'm just gonna make my fingers quieter There is something in the background, but you don't need to have it very specifically delineated. I often talk about a picture where you have something that is very cl uh, closely by and you can see that, and in the background you see something that is a little bit more blurry. That's exactly what you want to do with music in this case. The accompaniment needs to be not as prominent so that you can actually focus more in the melody. Uh, then we actually have our first, well, what I call a retransition, because you're going to come right back to what you did. All right, so you do this two times. transition so let's study that so you of course started with this or you ended with this in your last set of those two uh, two first little phrases musical phrases string like before four on the fifth string but this time instead of going one on the fifth string you're gonna go one on the fourth string back to the fifth string three four again four string fifth string three four and then think of it as a phrase extension more than a retransition right fret, then of course ninth fret, third string, fifth string, fourth finger, and then you're back in business, you repeat the first ones, the first two sentences uh, back, so all together. transition because you're going somewhere new this time around, right? So let's take a look. Instead of going back to the fourth string like the retransition, 
transition. Fifth string. Four on the six, two on the six. And now you begin your next phrase. Right, that starts this time not on the fifth string, but on the sixth string, but seventh fret, right? So there are a lot of similitudes, right? A lot of things are similar. Here you skip from the sixth string down to the fourth string, so you have to really practice making sure that your thumb knows where to go. This time you're gonna stack three and four on the ninth fret. Four on the fourth string, three on the fifth string, and back to the sixth string. You're gonna repeat that. Three, I mean four. Three stacked on top of it. All right? So let's take a look at how that works. And then we actually have another transition. Starts the same way as your second theme. Well, it's not really a second theme. This, this whole thing is a one single theme group. Right? So one on the sixth string, seventh so fret, of course. Three on the fifth string. Right? So one, three, and then on the fourth string. Slide one. This time you're in ninth position, right? Well, we always know ninth position because of the karate chop, right? You just bring your hand over to the side of the guitar and you have it there. I just never know if I have a, a cutaway guitar. I'm always in trouble when it comes to ninth position because I'm so used to just doing this. I know I'm in ninth uh, with a cutaway, right? So at any rate, let's just get back to this. So you have, this is a transition. Well, it's really a retransition. Double shift means that you go over two frets. Two, four. Now watch this. You are on the ninth position, right? Your index finger is on the ninth fret. Then three is on the tenth fret, right next to it. Why am I doing this? I'm skipping the second finger there, right? Second finger's in the middle, up in the air, and the one and three are in adjacent frets. It's because I'm going to use three to push my index away, to keep on walking back, you know, so almost. Right? So it's kind of like a walker, almost think of an inch warm as it goes, right? One, three. That prepares me for one on the seventh position. Three. And then I return, fifth string. Four. And then I'm back in business, right? So it's really a retransition, like I said earlier. Retransition. Double shift. Two, four. One, where it is. This time, three, right next to it, right? It displaces, moves the one away to the seventh position. A little bit of a stretch. Then you have your closing of two notes, fifth string four, three, and then you're back on. Let's take a look at how all of this works. Here comes retransition. And then you repeat it twice. string. Why? Because one is over here and we want to hold on to that harmony from the B, you know, that, that, that fundamental. Two on the seventh string, right? So this time I open up my wing on the left hand, right? So I open my arm up, my shoulder moves out so that I can accommodate this. This is what I call a forward position of the left hand because my hand is in this disposition, going this. This being neutral, this being backward. And you need to master all three, right? And there, of course, different variations of each one of them, right? Not that we need to get too picky on that. So again, this is your transition. This time you're going to move up, but you're going to land with one, right? Like before, like 
to retrocession, you were starting in a different place, so you have to accommodate for that. Two. those become a bit more involved, but the melody is the same. So the principles of the structure of the piece are going to be the same, right? For the triplets, uh, I prefer using thumb, index, ring, skipping the middle. I feel it balances my right hand more. However, I have a lot of students, I've had a lot of students that worked on this piece that prefer the thumb, index, and middle. I prefer the, the ring finger, the reason being is the middle finger, if you notice, is quite a bit longer and I feel that it's more balanced to use thumb, index, ring. But if you feel thumb, index, middle, and you should try it. Um, if you feel that that is more comfortable for you, by all means, go ahead and try that, right? So this time we actually have to do a little bit of a stretch on our left hand, right? So you're on the seventh fret, fifth string. With your thumb, you're gonna get two strings, right? So how to get two strings and get to hear that note, which is the most important the accompaniment is the sixth string, right? But feel that you hear the fifth string more present, there's a trick to that, right? Don't stop at the fifth string. You're going to get more sixth string. If you actually think I'm going to go through the fifth string, so go through, through the sixth string, through the fifth string, and land on the fourth string without playing it, you're going to get more fifth string. Right? Your pinky is going to be also on the seventh fret, so you're going to, the, going to do the pinky splits, right? Between pinky and ring finger, right? The index finger is going to grab the second string open. Then, in my case, ring finger is going to grab the first string. You could do it with the middle finger like we discussed earlier. And then you're going to go back to the fourth fret. A little bit of a stretch, right? But it's not too bad. Then you tuck that in. Right? So let's take a look at how all of this connects it to each other. So you start here. Transition. Transition. Then one three on the seventh position. Then one three on the fifth position. Then move back to fourth position. And then you set up your pinky on the first string, and you set up your ring finger on the fifth string, both seventh fret. This time I'm using middle, just for an example. Scenario to have the open and then back on. And that way you're doing the first statement one more time, but this time with triplet. It's the same thing that you did over here. But this time you have a more accompaniment, so to speak. I hope this little part helps. And we're going to continue with the triplets and we're going to get ourselves through the first whole section of this piece and I hope you have a lot of fun practicing it.